My experience has been, I don't carry work ID. I've never owned any in my life. I refuse to carry it, as a matter of fact, um, because I don't need it. I don't want people knowing my last name. I don't want them knowing my age code. Uh, it's, uh, the Ameritech is our local exchange carrier for those of you out of town. Um, my age code is my, my tech ID number is H949032. Um, but I never need that. I've never needed that information one time. I don't work directly for Ameritech, so I don't have ID. However, I routinely walk into businesses. Anyone here manage uh, network? Okay, we got some network admins. Good, good, good. Okay, so when I walk into your office and go, hi, I'm the phone guy. You got a problem up in, on the third floor. One of your, your users is complaining about their voicemail. I'm going to take a look at it. You're probably going to let me in, no questions asked. I look like it. And I'm, and, well, I didn't even know there's a problem. Kick ass. I don't have to deal with them. Right on. Typically, network admins don't care what I do. They don't care at all because I'm not touching their equipment. Or I'm fixing their equipment. Um, if you have an Adtran uh, TA850, it breaks out a T1 into, into like distinct uh, 64K channels. I can figure those. It's just a boring piece of white box on the wall. But nobody IDs you. Nobody ever asks for ID from the phone guy. Why not? Because people are stupid. OK, two weeks ago, um, I got this haircut new. And I got this haircut not for the conference, like I should be telling people because I seem like the, the loyal, helpful son of a gun that I am. But actually, I got the lose the hair, lose your job speech. And the, the telco market in Detroit is so incredibly tight. I said, you know, I'll have to get a haircut for an interview anyway, so yeah, I'll just get it and keep a paycheck until I get a better paycheck. And so that's, that's the story behind the haircut. But I was walking in with hair down to here, and I shave about twice a week. I need to shave about three times a week, but I'm a pushy bastard. Um, yeah, so simply, you know, pretty much I have no real accountability because I'm in such an obscure channel of the, of the industry that nobody can fire me. And I work really, really cheap. Yeah, I do. Um, I'm 65% of what the, the uh, I like charge is. And I work twice as well because, well, I'm not smoking crack. I look like it, but I'm not. Um, if you've seen a lot of Ameritech or Verizon or AT&T or MCI or any um, IRC-LEC employees, they pretty much dress like this. Um, we got the climbing boots, we got the, we got the belt, we got a shirt. Sometimes we're wearing ID, sometimes we're not. Um, Ameritech is the only one I can speak intelligently on. Their, their company policy is you either wear a work shirt or you wear an ID, but you don't have to wear both. I don't know why. But that's like standard policy. If you're wearing the shirt, you don't have to have ID on you because there's no mag stripes. And if you have a mag stripe uh, for like a CO, yeah, you, you carry it or you're just a dumbass. But Again, this is Ameritech, and they are. Um, we look shady. It's, there's a type of personality that's attracted to this industry, and it's not a smart one. Um, I crawl through ceilings. I've, I've fallen 40 feet. Um, I've lost probably three liters of blood on customer equipment. Um, it happens. This isn't the smartest group of people. This is the group of people who heal fast. And because we don't like to deal with people, um, anything I say can be really, really obscure deliberately. Yeah, OK, here's the problem. Um, your DS1's down, and we're working on the problem right now. It looks like your TA850 is uh, misconfigured. I'm going to take a look at that um, out of the CO. Um, it could be a number of things. I'm just going to be up in the ceiling taking a nap for about 45 minutes. Um, I don't verbalize that last part, but OK, I'll admit it. I have fallen asleep on customer sites. And then I've subsequently billed them. Yes, yes, I have. Well, it didn't go to me. I don't get a commission. But um, yeah, this is a customer who said, yeah, I need one phone line drop 12 feet. Um, they needed 12 phone lines drop 400 feet. So my 30-minute uh, expectation, and this was like the one week in my life where I had a tight schedule. Um, I had to call five customers and say, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't work as fast as you'd like me to, so I have to reschedule you for next week. And I don't like being yelled at by customers because, well, I don't like customers. I don't want to deal with human beings. None of us do. 
So anyways, uh, back on topic, you have very strange, you're used to weird people coming up to your building and saying, hi, I'm here to fix stuff. I got a work order that makes no sense to you. Well, we got stuff. Now, typically what happens is I'll walk into a building I've never been in. And let's call it a one-story office building. It's a standalone building. It's not a strip mall or anything. I walk in and go, hi, I'm the phone guy. 50% of the time they say, well, what do you want? And I say, is something broken? I don't think so. Can I look? Sure. Okay, that's very, very bad. That's kind of like saying, hi, you might have deli- you know, bad charges on your credit card. Um, can I have the number and I'll check for you? I can do sick and wrong things to your phone lines. I could do things that scare the Amish. Um, I scare Romanian children. They tell tales about my work. Um, most of my job description is covered by the FCC. Um, they have very strict, very bizarre policies on what you can and cannot touch. Um, Hypothetically speaking, I violate that about twice a week because you can touch the wires on this side of the block. However, one quarter of an inch to the left, you can't. Well, if I see the physical problem, I'm not waiting three weeks for high cap to provision someone out to move a wire. I'm simply just going to fix it because, well, not because I'm diligent, not because I'm thorough. It's because I don't want to have to come back. So now that you know who you're talking to, when the Ameritech guy comes to, or whoever your local phone company is, um, when they come in and they say, hi, I'm here to fix stuff, first of all, ask them what. Then verify if it's broken. Um, a lot of times, um, I've, I have gone in places where they have installed the wrong type of circuit, the circuit to the wrong building. I once had one where they left, but left the line. Somehow the order actually got passed through and, and completed. You know those little green boxes on the side of your lawn that you have to use the weed whacker to cut the grass around, the cross-connect cans? It was three cans away, but it was a completed order. That's common. Now, in that case, it's completely against the law for me to touch it, and I like it that way because I don't have to figure out where the hell they are. So what I do is I say, yeah, there's nothing at the network interface. Find it. Tag it is my, my best one. Yeah, okay, I'm sure it's there. Put a tag on it for me. And eventually they bring it in the building and claim it was there all the time, and, well, my shit's there, and it's all good. Number two, ask for ID. You'd be amazed how many places I have. I've been doing my job for four years. I have got three locations, three locations that consistently ask me for identification. One of them is an actually secured site. Um, they do record and data storage. They require me to give them my driver's license. They can pair it to me. Um, they give me a visitor badge that requires escort. Uh, they never ask me to be escorted, but you know the badge thinks it is, so it's all good. Um, the other two are, one of them is a building downtown Detroit. Um, they don't read the log, so they make me sign in, no identification, because they see the tool belt. And they know I'm a contractor, so they want the ID. I have signed it in as Jesus Christ. I was going to do a manual Goldstein, but I couldn't spell it. Um, I have signed in as a lot of things. Um, Dan K. Jesus Christ was, of course, my favorite. And that was like the first time I did it really, really strangely. Because I thought, they've never checked the, ID, the name. They say, write it on the clipboard and go. Um, there's actually several columns. It's you know your name, uh, the customer name that you're visiting, the suite number, and the time in and out. I never sign out ever. I'm going back to my truck. I'll be right back like five minutes. I'm gone. I just don't want to. I'm just being contrary and petty, and well, I can. But they don't realize it because they don't read the freaking logs. Um, it's just when they get to the full page, they flip the page. If there's ever a problem on the 22nd, they see who signed in on the 22nd. They don't, I don't put down the date. Now, they can look at the one before and after and kind of deduce that you know, this jackass was there on the 22nd. But they don't know who I am. Um, I don't put my company name. When they, you know, sweet number, I say all. Because they deserve to be messed with because they're stupid. Don't have security policies unless you actually even try to enforce them. 
mean, they're great for like you with the belt. Sign in. But they, it, the the belt is the board is actually from about me to Jason Scott from them. Now, unless they've got like like X-ray eyes, nothing ever is seen, and they don't read it. It's all good. The third one um, actually is the weirdest little spot in the in the world. It's um, like Nine Mile in Greenfield. Um, the security guard there is about 400 years old, and he doesn't like anybody. Um, but he's not very smart. See, that's really the bad side. It's like he's really great about like stopping people from what he thinks they're supposed to not do. But if they're allowed to do it, he won't let them do it either. Um, the customer has a uh, an iLac, and the iLac will not you know wire to wire to prem. They only wire to our existing RJ21X, which is the 66 block. And what happens is they bring the dial tone and they sometimes even tag it for. This is the the, the demarcation point for the entire building. Uh, like uh, if anyone who's from around here, it's the Guardian Building at Nanning Greenfield. Um, the security guard is an idiot, and he will not let you into that room unless you have ID. I say, but I don't have any. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Why not? Because I don't. I'm like, here's my business card, my company name. Here's my driver's license with my name that matches the business card. And I thought I was, you know, going to get in at this point. And he looks at it, and he can tell I'm up to something, but he doesn't quite know what. So he gets really irritated that he can't figure out what my scheme is. So he just says, no. Gives my stuff back. No, you can't come in. OK. So I, I actually had to have the customer call and confirm, yeah, uh, tall, skinny, white guy, really weird. Let him in. Um, OK, that's fine. I don't mind. It was a little bit irritating. Like, how dare you deny me access? I was just in a bank. The bank didn't know me. I'm dead serious. I could give you bank names of who has never questioned me. Hi, I'm the phone guy. Um, you're having some kind of problem with your voicemail? I don't even know what. Yeah, yeah, the voicemail is acting weird. OK, what's, the, what's it actually doing? OK, they've now let me in the building. This is even social engineering. This is just like a casual lie. Hi, I'm the phone guy. I could do very bad things to your phone lines. And I'm not talking about, I can come in, I can put my butt set on your phone line, and I could call, like, Ecuador and laugh because, ha, 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 I'm pranking some schmo in Ecuador ordering a pizza. Hi, is this Ecuador? Can you see the equator? No, see, that's lame. I, I could do much better things. I can move your phone line to my house. I can move your phone line to my house, and I can call Ecuador in my underwear anytime I want, as often as I want, for as long as I want. And then all I have to do is remove a pair of jump wire when I think, OK, they're going to get their phone bill probably like tomorrow. I should probably like destroy any freaking evidence that this line's in my house before I go to fucking prison. Because that is, by the way, a federal offense if you ever consider doing it. You're going to become somebody's bitch. Because, you know, the murderers and rapists do not respect a stool of phone call. <laughs> if you're not somebody's bitch, you ought to be, just for saying that. Lie about what you're in prison for if it's for phone fraud. I, I beseech you. Yes, ask for identification. And then, even if you get it, verify it if they look, if they look shady. Or if they just piss you off. Because a lot of times, now, okay, when I go to a customer, I pretend like I care about their problem. I give them 90 seconds to care. Hi, Mr. Smith. Um, how are you doing today? My name's Dan. I'm the phone guy. Um, I understand you have a problem with your voicemail. If you can go into a little bit with what's going on, I'd be happy to take a look at it for you. Okay, that's like 20 seconds. Then they talk. They tell me what the actual problem is. Um, by the end, they actually tell me what's really going on versus what they imagine and, and are sure is the problem. Um, typically, the data network is down because um, their Ameritech voicemail is acting funny. Um, yeah, these are the two things that have the least about each other, and I do get that a lot. Um, any people working in the, in the uh, data maintenance understand that customers, they need you for a reason because they don't know what they're talking about. And that's cool. I'm down with that. I, I prefer customers not knowing what I do for a living because it keeps me employed. If everyone knew how to do my job, I would be flipping burgers right now. And this would be like BurgerCom because I have that kind of power. Yeah. Okay, but 
a lot of times, um, I kind of have a problem with Ameritech technicians. I know about three that I really respect. Um, I know about 40. And the problem is, is that most of them are idiots. Um, they have really poor training, and that's, that's company, unfortunately. It's not the people's fault that the company won't train them. They pretty much say, yeah, we gave you like a week's worth of training on you know, standard, you know, nothing's weird in this equation, uh, situations. Figure it out. Well, okay, I'm not supposed to repair D DS1s. Well, figure it out. It's just, you know, 20, it's just jump wire. Figure it. Fix it. Make it work. Um, that happens a lot. A lot of, time, of, of problems that you'll suddenly have, there was nothing wrong, um, but your entire neighborhood doesn't have a phone line, and there was no backhoe in the area, is that somebody didn't know you can't cut the wires. Or Paul Timmons, in fact, did get a squirrel in a jar of peanut butter in a cross-connect box. Anyone who knows Paul and understands that joke. He, he's never done it to my knowledge, but he threatened to do it to me once, and I almost wet myself laughing because it was just so damn funny. Well, because he can figure out where my cross-connect is. I mean, I know where it is. I actually found it before I found my, my apartment where I'm living now. I'm like, oh, there's my CO. I live three blocks and the CO is on a corner. You can't miss it. I give it as a landmark. Okay, you go down, when you, when you get to Mac, there's a, an Ameritech building on your, left, on your right, turn left. And, um, well, all my friends are phone geeks, so they're like, what silly code is that? I'm proud to say I don't know. <clears throat> it makes me feel good about myself that I don't know something that useless. Um, but yeah, most I refer to Ameritech technicians as pretty much meat things, meat bags, and train chimps. Now, that's not accurate because, well, you can train chimps to do a better job. Their verbal skills will be lacking, I admit. They'll be on par with Ameritech. There'll be even distribution at that point. However, they would be able to crawl rafters quicker, easier, without complaining. And they'd be more pleasant, and they only throw half as much feces. <clears throat> I have had to clean up more Ameritech nonsense messes just because they don't know what the hell they're doing than I care to, to admit to. Um, and it happens. You know, I make mistakes. I'm a human being. Believe it or not, the phone guy actually is human. I can, I have, a, it's a rumor. <clears throat> but... Most of us don't act like we're human. Um, it's a very dirty job. It's very disgusting. It's very thankless. Um, I'll be in your ceiling for 45 minutes, um, crawling through like 500 years worth of dust. Actually, I have crawled through asbestos uh, dust that had been there minimum of 100 years. Um, <clears throat> Detroit houses the third largest number of pre-depression buildings in the United States. I'm in their crawl spaces. <laughs> There's a reason why I weigh 165 pounds and I'm six foot tall. It's because if I gain any weight, I can't work. I can't, if I can't get my head and shoulders into it, I can't, I can't pull cable through it. My boss is overweight, which is why I'm the poor schlub who falls 40 feet when all of a sudden there's no more support underneath you. And it hurts a lot. You don't get the rest of the day off, by the way, at my company. Um, the phrase, suck it up, you're not bleeding, was, was uttered. <clears throat> He was a drill sergeant, and it shows. But yeah, you, typically you get someone who comes in, and they're just a complete cock knocker. Yeah. Okay. Um, you got some kind of problem here. Uh, according to my order, I'm supposed to just test this out. No, that's not what we said when we ordered the, we made the trouble ticket. In actuality, what we're supposed to do is I've got no dial tone. I need you to, to fix it. And while you're here, I need you to actually bring it to the DMARC, not leave it hanging on the ceiling. <clears throat> yeah, well, actually, I recently, as recently as last week, had somebody take the line, off, the pair off of the DMARC, pull the cable back. It was like a Cat 3 coming in. It was for their DSL and their fax line. They, they beanied it. Again, this is a DSL. They beanied it to um, an existing Cat 5 cable that was run up through the ceiling. They terminated the Cat 5 early, and they left the DSL router plugged in in the ceiling because that's where the Cat 5 went. Now, never mind that I had a 25 pair running to the extended DMARC. It was labeled, to extended DMARC, room 25. It was like the one in 30 that I actually label. I never label things because, well, who the hell needs to know that? It's, it's obvious, it's a 25 pair, it's going to the front. Think about it. 
Okay, well, thinking about it and reading the freaking, you know, anyone know the phrase RTFM? Read the fucking manual. It's applicable in many cases in my job, and um, no one does it. If you have someone who's coming in as a cock knocker, even if they're wearing the shirt, they're wearing the belt, they got the truck with a flashing yellow light, they have ID, you can verify it. It's it, absolutely, you're right. I'm sorry, before I let you in, I need to have your identification. I want to confirm your identity. You go, you start downloading porn off Kazaa. Uh, you get on game for about 10 minutes. And you pick up the phone. You, they might be an 800 number, I don't know. Um, and you call and go, yeah, I got this guy, and he's here. Um, I want to confirm his identity. And it takes them about five minutes to figure out who the hell this is. Um, actually, you, if you scan it and then go to Kinko's, you can get a really, really nice print. Um, I had an instructor once who, what he did was, he was retiring and go, going in as a private contractor, and they were removing, re taking away his um, his badge because he's the contractor now. He's not like staff, so he could he only got the contractor badge, and that only let him into like part of the building. Well, so what he did was he went to Kinko's and he Xerox, he did a photo, color photocopy of his badge, and he laminated it, and everybody knew he retired, and they're like, "Dude, you're still here." Yeah. And he just went in and whenever somebody else would like swipe their card, he would just walk in after them. Um, yeah, not checking ID is pretty rampant. Now that was actually fairly slick. You know, I mean, the, 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 everyone knew the guy personally. And he was doing it as a joke. He wasn't like, you know, stealing proprietary information. He wasn't a bad guy. In fact, he was a great teacher. Um, he knew more about ADTSE than I ever care to know. Um, but yeah, check an ID. And you're allowed to make their lives hell. It is your God-given right to make their lives a nightmarish, living, breathing hell because you're the customer, and they do it to me every day. And you should. Um, but, again, the way I'm dressed right now, any one of you would say, oh, yeah, you can fix stuff. <clears throat> and once you're in the building, see, the phone guy doesn't exist. I don't have a name. I don't have an identity. I'm, I'm the phone guy. I haven't had privilege of persons in, in four years. Which is nice because I like the anonymity. I like being the shadowy man who just fi ma magically fixes stuff. I refer to um, my repairs in my paperwork as FM. Anyone know the phrase FM? Y yes, exactly. It's fucking magic. How'd you fix it? Well, it was working. It wasn't working before. I plugged in my tester. It suddenly started, it came to life. I can't find what was causing the problem. It's fucking magic. Now, with the customer, you make up what happened. You're like, you know, I'm not 100% sure. I think it was like a loose wire um, at the DMARC. I, I just re-terminated. Um, that probably will clear up. It might not. You might have a secondary issue. Um, if you do, give us a call. We'll be happy to come back out again and see if we can recreate the problem. Um, at this point, I can't recreate it, so I'm assuming that was the only problem. Yeah, it's freaking magic. Um, $65 an hour for me to plug in a tester. Minimum of one hour. If you live far, far away from my, my apartment is, we charge you for the, the mileage because, well, I'm far, far away. My boss whines, why did it take you two hours to get there? Because it's two and a half hours away and I drove really effing fast. Well, don't get a ticket, but get there faster. <laughs> did I mention he's insane? Yes. <clears throat> I digress. Um, I've been let into vaults. I actually only wanted to go into the vault to see if they would let me in. Now, this bank knew me. I admit, that, that was cheating. They knew who I was. <clears throat> uh, my office is across the street from this location. Um, and I had been doing there for three years. But I'm like, you know, I think you got some cable running through the vault. And I think that's the problem with your voicemail. Um, so I need to get in there. Would that be cool? I mean, I understand if you don't, but um, there's not much I can do if you don't. So. Um, yeah, pretty much, because um, I'm not running new cable through that, through that freaking vault because it's, it's fire stopped on both ends. And you probably can't even see it. It's probably actually behind the blast wall. Um, and customers don't know what the hell you're talking about, so you can make up things like a blast wall. <laughs> and it's good. It's all good. Um, I do not condone anyone doing this illegally, by the way. Um, you will go to jail when you're caught for being an idiot. Um, and if you are, don't mention my name. Um, again, I, do, I only do this because this is my job. This is what I do for a living, and I'm just having a little bit of fun with them. 
I'm led into secure sites, um, confidential st record storage. Um, they have no problem with me, you know, walking around completely unescorted. My hair was down to here, and I looked like I was smoking dope all morning. Um, sure, go on to the record room. It's all good. Uh, let's see, who else let me in? Um, one time, I was trying to configure a voice over IP uh, facet for a fairly large, well, fairly large copy manufacturer. They make photocopies, and it wasn't Xerox. And their T1, they couldn't do the voice over IP over th this dedicated circuit. And so I'm configuring it, and I said, okay, here's what I need. Um, I need you to give me your server password and username. I need your admin account because it will not take changes as a guest. I can't make this configuration. And it, it was true. So without question, I'd never met this guy. I still had yet to meet him. Um, he was at the other location. He's like, well, I can just tell that and, and log it in. I'm like, well, I have to keep rebooting the machine every time I make an attempt. And I predict about 12 because I don't know what the hell I'm doing, basically. You know, you've got this third-party application you want me to configure. You bought it. I don't know it. You don't have a tech for it. I'm the best you got. Um, okay, well, this is my password. He says, I mean, I can just change it after you leave, right? Yes. Yes, you can. Now, I admit I did not backdoor it. I thought about it. I stood there with the, my fingers poised over the keyboard, thinking, do I really want to own someplace who sells, like, multi-thousand dollar copiers? I don't really have anything I need to copy, though. Um, I'm not about greed. I'm really not. I'm very strange. I'm not financially oriented, which is why I'm poor. But, you know, I'm cool with it. My creditors are pretty pissed. But, <clears throat> but fuck them. Um, it, but it's all good. But I do things because I'm curious. I like to explore. Um, I love these buildings that are 100 years old because, like, it's, you get this glorious architecture that's been, like, covered up by, like, a false ceiling. You know, you get to see this, like, this beautiful, like, stone arch, you know, that's like, dude, you should gut your, your building and, like, paint it. Seal, water seal this. This is godlike. No, the ceiling looks nice. I. Yes, we do use that word in this industry. I is, in fact, a, an affirmative response. Jason, are you awake? No, I know you can sleep with your eyes open. I've seen it before. It's glorious. Yeah. Don't give the phone guy your server password. You deserve every bad thing he does to you if you do it. I promise you. I only know one tech. I only personally know one technician that I would trust with my voice and data applications at the same time. If for voice over IP. And it's not Paul Timmons. Paul's my boy, but he doesn't configure Cisco every stinking day. Ben Mason is the only person I would trust for telephony and for data. Um, and I wouldn't trust me, quite frankly, because I'm a butcher. Um, I do bad things to, to computers. I admit it. Um, I'm a freaker who hacks, not a hacker who freaks. But, you know, to each his own. Um, but the reality is, is that the phone guy is untrained at all. Did anyone here have DSL? All right. When they installed your DSL, did they seem like the village idiot? Did they seem to identify what a computer was, or did they actually have a written checklist of what to do step by step? Like the, the complete and utter idiot's guide to installing a DSL line. Bring in phone number. Put on jack. Put on filters. Plug in unit. Power on. Do loop back test. I have I have seen the I've seen a lot of like bizarre DSL things. Um, typically, it's the we have this DSL line. It's also our fax machine, and it's not filtered. And you have problems, you say. Have you tried a DSL filter? Yeah, but um, it kept falling out of the wall. And I care why. Buy a new one. Buy a better one. Buy the master one. Buy the one that's 25 bucks. I don't care. It's not my money. Anyone ever not hear somebody in an office someplace where you wanted to beat them to death because they said, quote, the internet is down? <laughs> that is such a common expression. And it's most of the time, it's not like joking. Now, when a text says, oh, shit, the entire internet's down, 
millions and millions of computers all went down at the same moment, along with switches and, and, and routers. The damnedest thing. What were the odds? Okay, now that's, that's a great joke, the first time. But Office, is, it's routine for the network to be down for whatever reason. Um, we're, we're upgrading the switch. Um, we're going to a gigabit switch. Um, you're going to be down for like five minutes. There's, there's a lot of downages for, for data. It's just, and I think part of it is because the users really don't understand the technology, so it's okay. They don't understand why it works. They don't understand how it works. They don't even understand that it works. They just know that I type in my thing on my keyboard, and I hit enter, and then they pay me for it. That's it. That's all the user has to know, and I'm cool with that. However, the telephone's been around since the 1800s. Everybody grew up with the telephone being a real tangible item. Now, in 1968, you actually were allowed to put, you know, third-party applications onto your telephone line, like a fax machine, um, that, which then led to the divestiture, which I will pleasantly, pleasantly spare you. Um, I could actually go on about the divestiture and the seven baby bells at length, but I won't. Merry Christmas. Um, where the hell was I going with that? No matter. All right. Because you, you can uh, put any damn thing you want in the phone line, you should. However, you shouldn't let, necessarily let the village idiot install it. Um, I actually turned down a cable service because their technician was too stupid. I couldn't talk him over, through it over the phone. They called me at work. I'm installing like somebody's LAN. I'm on my Nextel, and I'm explaining to him where my switch is. I'm explaining to him that I currently have Comcast. I describe what the Comcast box looks like. I'm like, it's the one that says Comcast. <laughs> it's black. There are six green lights on it. The first three are solid green. The, the second two, if you're going from left to right, the second two are probably intermittent. The third one might flash periodically, but not necessarily. I'm like, that's my cable modem. The back of that is my cable. You take that box off and put your box on and take the other end of that wire and put it from Comcast little green box to your little green box. That's what I want you to do. Well, we have these policies and procedures and we have to go through the checklist. Okay, here's the deal. You're going to do that and you're going to do it right now. Well, we have these pol one of the policies was the switch had, the, the router had to be in the same room as a computer. Well, I didn't have a computer in my living room, I'm sorry to say. When I, I had to call Wide Open West. I shouldn't uh, give them an anti-plug like this, but the hell with them. Um, I called them back. I said, okay, here's what I need you to do. I need you to send me somebody who's heard of. I don't even care if they have certifications. I want someone who's heard of Bixie standards. Bixie is, um, do you know what the IEEE is? Um, okay. It's like the phone guy version of that. It's, they have their own independent, incredibly expensive to test out um, certifications that says, yes, I can wire stuff. I have two Bixie points. I'm an Allentel certified uh, Cat5 e installer. I can punch down a wire onto a jack. I didn't actually have to show up for the training. It was held at Gray Bar. I showed up um, for lunch and to pick up some Cat5. And I showed up at the end, and he's like, how'd you like the lecture? I'm like, it was good. <laughs> What's your name? I told him. And I had a little piece of paper. I framed it, it's in my office. It's really, really cheesy. Uh, it's next to my brain bench certification, which my boss was impressed with. Going back to he's insane. Yeah. Um, for the most part, when you do a voice over IP, you have two people. You have the telephony guy, a guy like me, who hopefully has heard of a computer and possibly even touched one once. And then you have the data guy, who can tell you what your, what your subnet mask is while drunk, blindfolded, and being beaten with batons. He can like calculate bizarre equations, like mystically. I have the greatest respect for data guys because I don't understand half of it. I mean, I understand the protocols, I understand the amount of electricity. I can run your cable, but I don't understand what you're doing, anything beyond, like, um, well, pretty much anything that involves, like, more than, like, three seconds worth of intelligent thought. 
if I had the epiphany in the shower of, holy crap, I got to put the card in the machine. Okay, cool. Um, beyond that, no. No. I shouldn't configure your network, and I routinely do it. It's just because everyone else there is stupid or stupider than I am, which, you know, is not hard to do. Um, I'm not the dumbest person in the world. I'm sure by, by not the smartest. But, okay, you have these two groups of people, and they don't like each other. It, typically, uh, data people have no respect for the phone guy because, dude, you're doing analog tip and ring. You are so freaking lame. Yeah, why don't you go climb a pole, tough guy? And then the, the telephony people typically look at the data guy as like, you know, this arrogant little 22-year-old snot who has no idea what the hell he's talking about. Because, well, we typically have no idea what the hell he's talking about, so obviously it's not our fault. Damn it, we're the phone guy. We are gods. Okay, now these two people have to configure the same piece of equipment to work. That's why voice over IP doesn't work. Or why, that's why everyone doesn't have voice over IP in their house. It's because people who hate each other have to have lunch and talk about what the hell they're doing. And even if you get it installed somewhat, something goes wrong eventually. Everything goes wrong eventually. It's the law of the new universe. You can have like the world's greatest switch, the world's best fiber optic connection, and sooner or later, a squirrel's gonna chew through your D1, DS1. Why? Because that would suck, but it happens. In that case, it's no big deal. Okay, well, we don't have lights and green lights in the smart jack. Yeah, call a phone company, make them fix it. When your internal communications don't work, what happens is, okay, I'm actually certified to install um, the North Star, Nortel uh, BCM, the Business Communication Manager. It's the world's worst IP telephony system on the planet. You know it well. I'm the I'm the only I'm like the only non-Ameritech guy in the state who's certified to do it. And it doesn't work. I mean, it does kind of. Like, um, hey, baby, come here often kind of works. If she's got brain problems. But not usually. So what happens is, okay, so my, my quality of stand, I get a lot of, like, um, latency issues, and you start getting um, echo. You know, okay, so you have to, you know, apply echo cancellation. You got to, like, you know, tweak your, your, your quality of service standards. No big deal. Well, the problem is somebody says, I paid a metric ass load, trademark, of money for this system. Why is it broken? Well, whoever they ask blames the other guy. Well, you know, my, my smack was set. You know, and then he came in and changed it. Now, he came in and changed it because it doesn't work in the default settings. So what happens is, okay, I do my stuff, I do a textbook. You come in, you're like, okay, this doesn't work. Okay, I know if I change his setting to this, okay, I use a different uh, compression ratio, it's all good. If something goes wrong, it's all finger pointing. Um, that's why I'm one of the few people who can play with the phone and a computer at the same time. There's like 10 of us. We're all this lame, by the way. Um, any questions, comments, Rotten Tomatoes? Those attending Otacon, you know, thank you for your money. Uh, suck my nuts. Unless you're uh, Paul, Jody, or um, Jason, and in which case, you guys rock, and everyone else, suck my nuts. <laughs>